There we go. Yep. Let's continue. Wonderful. All right. Good evening, everyone. First up, we get to do the minutes for February 25th. Has everyone read them? Are we okay? Yes. Yep. I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion, accept as written. I'll second them. All right, so it's a roll call vote. I don't know how to do this without stepping over each other. Just start at the roster at the top of the agenda. Okay, Just so call, our, call our names out. All right, so Joe DD, I. Mr. Kanicki? I. Uh, uh, Carl Steinhardt, I. Yeah. Alinda? Alida? Uh, Alida Di Maria, I. Thank you. Linda? I. And Chelsea, were you there? Yes. yes. Chelsea Berry, aye. And then the last young man. Terry. Yes, Terry. Aye. Yeah, All right, great. Thank you. All right, next up was the planning board. It's close enough at 532. Gentlemen, how are you this evening? Pretty good. Good. Michael, Michael you're muted. No? So it, it would probably be good if the two uh, individuals from the planning board introduce themselves to the full committee members. That would be wonderful. Go ahead, Alan. My name's Alan Sluster and I'm the town planner. And my name is Mike Doherty. I'm the chair of the planning board. Wonderful. Thanks for coming tonight. What would you guys like to discuss? Well, we do have a request in there related to the master plan. Um, you know, we, we certainly, re I think requested it in the past to some degree. Um, we have been working our best to piecemeal together, um, a master plan, um, you know, the open space component of it, uh, you know, has been completed. Um, we have requested and, and hope to receive through town meeting um, funds to do a housing component of it. Um, you know, I think to the extent that there's a, um, you know, environmental or natural resources type component of it as well, um, you know, that I think can be dealt with with other funds. And so we're looking at sort of the, you know, I'd say the meat of it um, to do with, to deal with the, you know, land use and how that, how the community wants, um, uh, wants us, you know, as a planning board and as a community to proceed as far as land development, land use, um, um, you know, some of the things that we've been dealing with, you know, that we're talking about in, in future meetings about solar bylaws and where solar is going to go, um, uh, you know, how to deal with, uh, there's a number of developments coming in. Um, I, you know, I, Last time I talked to Rob Levesque, he has three or four at least on his on his desk um, coming in through town. So, you know, I I think we're reaching somewhat of a critical point, or at least a point where I'm starting to feel a little less comfortable having a not having a master plan, and would want to, you know, we Southwick has grown a lot, um, you know, in the last twenty years or so. I, I think having a better sense of where people want this to go. Um, and when you're starting to put in, uh, you know, some, some, whether it's clean energy or, or, or new developments and, and keep that progress going uh, on a town that used to be an old farm town, um, you know, having some input I think is, is important. So this is really where we're looking to try to uh, get this started and, uh, get a good ways into that heart of, of the master plan and, and what people want um, Southwick to look like as far as a land use and development um, okay. uh, concept. So and Carl, and I'll let Alan add whatever yep. he wishes to add. He's more technical than I am, so he can probably explain it a lot better. Right. Well, um, our master plan that we have right now is 50 years old. And like Michael was saying, uh, the town has grown quite a bit. And a, a master plan 
as a valuable tool to guide the town in the proper directions. And I don't, I'll, I'll just use a couple of examples for, <clears throat> you know, with, more recently we've just put in a couple of roads and the roads, sanitary sewer should have been put in. It's the deepest utility. And it, if there was a master plan, the town would have more enforcement and requiring that <clears throat> because if that area is, it's a shame to dig up a brand new road to put sewers in. Uh, it gives it gives the town the growth. It tells where new roads will go, where new subdivisions are, uh, different housing, um, you know, interconnection roads. So it it, it is a, it is a tool that's not only owned by organized by the town. I mean, it's it's run by the town, and the planning board uh, can help guide them in those directions. Okay, and that's about it. All right. Oh, doesn't that trigger certain grants or certain things we won't qualify for if the master plan is not updated? Yeah, well, it, it would it would be very helpful from, um, I'm sure there's certain grants out there where you get more point <coughs> rankings for them if you have one. And what they're referring to is a 1967 document that had some minor updates through the regional planning agency in the 1990s. So, it, it most certainly needs to be updated. Um, within that framework, um, I believe Marcus was inquiring on, um, as, as Mike said, there's dollars under the Community Preservation um, Act that we have accrued that come under the housing area. And then there's also dollars that are under the open space area. So there may be some fund sources that can help um, underwrite each year this because what, what they're envisioning here is, is uh, if I read it right, uh, Mr. Chairman uh, Doherty was uh, 50,000 per year. So this would allow you to start, uh, get it underway, pay for services on an annual basis for those different facets or components of it. And I think, uh, I'm not sure if Marcus filed anything with the CPC now. Did he indicate to you because they were using March 1st as a deadline? I believe that they've already granted the $25,000 request and it needs to go into town meeting. Um, but that's my that's just my understanding. I've been trying to look back quickly at my emails to see. Right, that's, I, that's correct. And actually I talked to Marcus today and he's preparing some um, verbiage for a, a warrant article to be put on the uh, annual town meeting. And what Mr. Didi was saying before, a lot of times grants, they'll ask you if this is in compliance with our master plan. And unfortunately, we would not be able to tell them that. And there are other avenues that open. And what we're trying to do also is if we do get uh, approval, we will try to seek other plans from the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission and elsewhere to, to help facilitate the uh, plan. Right. And, and Alan was correct when he, when he referenced um, sometimes what happens is when the planning board gets into different issues where they make a decision on a development and that decision is appealed through a court of law, it always helps to have a master plan that's already been put in place and approved that can speak to an issue of what the community has articulated for a vision. And then if a developer, somebody's coming forward with a, a um, a development that's inconsistent with that uh, vision, then that helps also defend on a, a litigation on that issue. And just to give you a sense, um, you know, Marcus was kind enough to circulate a couple examples of costs um, for master plans in, in surrounding communities. Um, you know, it, it probably, in Blanford was $102,000 and East Long Meadow was appropriated 114,000 or so, um, you know, for a full master plan, uh, you know, hopefully using the open space plan that we have using that housing component of it, we can kind of reduce that. But, you know, it, that's probably about the ballpark of what a master plan would look like. Um, I mean, East Long Meadow, he has mentioned in here, you know, they had a, kind of similar I had a 44 year old master plan that they hadn't updated so they're kind of going through uh you know pretty fresh over there um 
So I think that that's a, a reasonable uh, similarity to us. Um, you know, and the other thing too, just as far as timing goes, you know, I think coordinating this with the green community um, initiative, I think is a useful exercise as well. You know, I think that that plays into this. Um, you know, we certainly will have to do some some work and possibly change some bylaws to sort of fit into that as well. Um, but I think having mm. a master plan kind of going at the same time um, would be useful for that process as well. All right, Mike, do you envision that that number, that hundred number, was that net after CPC offsets or maybe the gross number before we see what we secure through CBC? I, you know, and I can check with Marcus, my read of this is that that's the full amount that was appropriated in those towns for a master plan. Right. Um, okay. You know, like I said, you know, they, the open space committee has put together a, a, a very significant uh, plan. Um, I forget how many pages it is, but it's, it's decent size. Um, yes. Yep. And that can get incorporated in there. You know, the CPC grants uh, for housing that can get incorporated in there. I take that to mean that that would reduce that number to some degree, but you know, that's, I would say an educated assumption rather than, than pure knowledge. Um, were you, were you envisioning this uh, a full RFP out for private entities or were you thinking about um, some services with the regional planning agents? Um, I think that from an, you know, my personal opinion is that from an initial matter, um, coordinating with Pioneer Valley Planning Commission is a useful exercise because they've, they've done it and, and they're doing it with Blanford and they're doing it with East Long Meadow and, you know, they, they have that experience. So I think at least initially coordinating with them and seeing what the process that they're um, envisioning and they're putting out there is. Yep. Uh, is a useful exercise, whether you end up going with them or you do a private RFP. I, you know, I think that that's a decision for down the road, but. Okay, I'm just, I'm, I'm just um, thinking out loud here. If you work out something with them, they're a quasi-governmental uh, entity in Massachusetts. So you could have a scope of services and you wouldn't need a full blown RFP under procurement laws. You know, if you go down the other um, fork in the road you would then have to do the other full RFP and bid out, and then you would evaluate what you get for responses, and you're not um, um, required to take the lowest bidder under an RFP process. Right, and I, you know, I don't know enough about what they offer and what they suggest, and I would want to, you know, sit down with them and and hear their spiel and and, and find out, you know their experience with it and what they would suggest. And then I'd have a better, you know, um, uh, baseline to, to, to judge what, you know, which direction, at least I personally thought we should go. And then obviously it would be, right. I think the board, you know, input would be useful as well. And, and I think because the, the way you, the way this came in submitted, it was 50,000 per year. So if, if we're in, if we're going to do this, then we just need to be able to recognize that we're gonna to have to fund both years and we would wanna make sure that we structure um, <laughs> under a notice to proceed for the first threshold of dollars that you put in for fiscal year 22. And then um, if you're if you're gonna go for the whole thing, that's fine. If you're thinking about phasing more dollars in another fiscal year, then we, we have a phase two on RFP. So depending upon how you want to do that, that tells us how we have to um, craft the wording of your RFP and a subsequent contract when we hire somebody. Right, and I, um, you know, to be fair, I guess I, I guess I have in my head, um, I guess I have in my head that it's all together, right, and that it, and that you know the number getting into it it would allow you yeah. guys to target a number for the second you know uh fiscal year um that i'm, I'm hoping would be less than the fifty thousand dollars you'd have a you know a better sense of what that would be um so that would be my that would be my 
initial reaction to it, but I'm certainly open to, you know, you all know the, 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 the process better than I do for RFPs and, and all the administrative uh, part of it. So I would certainly be open to any suggestions about the way to structure it. Yeah, well, in terms of our document for tonight, we, we did word it for the 100 because that's okay. the cleanest way to do it because it, it, it meets, you know, if it meets the merit of the committee, because our role is to just vote on the merits, not the technical parts of it. Other people deal with those issues. Yeah, it would, seems to me like it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's ultimately what we need, right? So, so yeah. why do part of it and then have to redo the process um, and something that's halfway done? I mean, that doesn't make right. much sense to me, but again, no, I, that, I, that's just the way the, the way the budget came in. It's at fiscal year 22 and 23, it's at 50 per year. Right, right. And right now, you know, some of the other towns, they have, they're, they're afforded, because what they're doing is they're updating their plans, which our plan is really too old to update. They may use some, some of the text, but we'd have to go out to a private entity because a good portion of that is the graphics, the pictures and things along that way that, that, that the, um, the layman can understand. So we might want to shortchange now. Uh, we will be seeking other avenues and once we get those, if, if we are able to get those other avenues in hand, then it would reduce what we're asking for the town. But, you know, I, I understand the town's dilemmas, but uh, it's best to, you know, to go in with the full amount and hope we get something less than that. Okay. Thank you, Michael. Okay. Thank you, Alan. Any, any of you guys have any questions? Yes, I do. Terry. Yes, Terry. Uh, all right, well, all right, master plan, it's all wonderful and great or whatever. We've uh, moved along for many years without it. There's a lot of great bylaws that we have, you know, like flexible residential. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff in there already um, that are good. Um, but um, there's a great big elephant in the room as far as sewers. And, um, you know, we can do up these great uh, plans, but if the townspeople don't vote to um, have these uh, sewers put in and connected, then what's the point? And that goes for, that goes for uh, developments, that goes for businesses, that goes for, um, you know, all of that. And frankly, I mean, I'm not happy that they, that they got, you know, uh, those last two turned down for down by uh, Big Y and then going up north into, uh, you know, the American Inn direction up there on 10202. Um, that, that really screws up the, any kind of planning that you do. Um, and as far as things like, you know, mandating things uh, in a subdivision uh, for, you know, for looking ahead for sewers or whatever, um, if you don't even know what the grade is going to be in the finished product the project. Um, you know, we ran into this, and I can't even remember the name of the uh, the subdivision. We were going to put in, you know, uh, sewer lines. That's what we kind of thought about doing, but there's no there's no uh, no sewer plan to go even go in there. So so until we have, you know, if they can help us with trying to get a, a you know, another sewer plan in, um, you know, I think this is just kind of, you know, a lot of this is, uh, you know, just not going to make any sense. That's well, I think this, this, this master plan can help uh, determine some of those areas where that could be done, Terry. And it certainly sounds like you want to be on the master plan committee. <laughs> I, 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 I would if I can, you know, as far as the, uh, you know, not, not screwing things up with the finance committee, which, you know, does limit things that I can do. If that's, they get a reading that that's, um, that's okay for me to be on there with money being spent, then I'd be more than happy to, to be in there. I mean, I've seen a lot of this stuff happen and, uh, um, you know, where this town is going. I mean, we used to have, a, you know, the phase growth bylaw which, you know, 
controlled a lot of things, but that's uh, we can't have that anymore. So, so you know, and I, I think the direction to go, just my own sense, unless somebody knows something different. But I mean, it's, you know, the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission does do a lot of this this stuff, and you know, they can pluck stuff from what they're working on and you know, whatever, Greenfield or, or whatever, and, and you know, uh, just copy it and paste, you know, for us, um, if it makes sense. But um, I don't know. Anyway. It's Terry, just to address that point. I mean, I, I, I envision, at least in my, my thought process of it, I envision a master plan to have two components and to, and to run in two directions. One is you're getting the input of the town and you're trying to find out what the town is thinking and what they want and what they see for the future of Southwick on, on a bunch of different components um, of you know what, what's in a town. But I mean, I think to some degree that process as well as having a master plan you know, provides an educational tool uh, to, to help explain why you want it and why it's important and, you know, how it fits into the overall scheme. And it, it may be a useful exercise to, to convince people, you know, sewer here is useful because this is how it fits into a, an overall scheme. I mean, I think it has two roles to it. Um, and I don't think you, you know, I wouldn't discount the educational purpose of it, or at least, you know, um, it, it, it provides some, some evidence, you know, that you can use to sort of suggest to people why they should do something. Um, and it also, you know, may help guide people to proactively go out and try to, you know, shape the hearts and minds as far as how, how sewer, you know, if you're talking about sewer, how, how the sewer plan fits into everything. So, you know, there may be more education involved and that may help get that passed at some day. I mean, I don't, again, I, I disagree with what, you know, it not being passed, but um, you know, it doesn't mean it, it won't be, it just, you know, look into the, how you can do it. Joe, I have a question. Uh, it's Linda Bapple. Uh, Mike, what are you looking to define with, within this master plan and how are you going to go about getting those definitions? Um, clarify for me what you mean by define or what you're, what well, you're referring it, to. You know, what are you looking for in a master plan? And how are you going to obtain that information to know, like you, you say you want town input. So how are you going to obtain town input and what else are you looking for that if you're going to have a master plan, you have to define what it is and what the components are. So what are those components and how are you going to gather the information that you need to make that plan successful? So um, I could tell you how I would answer it. I think to some degree, you know, one of the first steps would be, um, you know, having a, a master plan committee who is, who is, you know, working at to, to that, to that set of definitions and exactly what they're looking for. But my, my general understanding, and Alan can certainly provide a uh, much more educated background on this than myself, but my general understanding is um, you're looking at land use, you're looking at housing, you're looking at economic development, uh, open space, natural resources, uh, transportation, um, uh, uh, climate issues, you're looking at implementation. Um, I think there's a number of different aspects that I have in my head um, and that have been talked about when we've talked about the master plan and that, I, you know, at one point Pioneer Valley came and uh, we, we talked to them about it, um, you know, and those are some of the things that stick in my head as far as components of it. Um, but, and I think those are to some degree traditional components of it. Uh, it doesn't mean you can't add other things, but um, I, I think that's how I would look at it. Um, you know, again, I would defer to 
the the Pioneer Valley Commission or wh wh whoever you hire um, in response to an RFP to to provide you with with methodology. I mean, I, I think it's not atypical to do um, surveys and send them to the town. It's not atypical to do community meetings and, and get input from the town members. Um, so, I mean, I think the process, I would somewhat leave up to people who know a lot more than me, um, but I, I more have a 30,000 foot view of of how I see it going. I mean, Alan can certainly fill in more details. He's had more experience with this field than I have. All right, there, there's, there's a lot of um, part to the, the puzzle. You know, basically, I mean, I don't want to labor it, but it goes in the topography of the town, which varies quite a bit, dictates, for example, do we need another east-west connector right now? You know, we only have Con we have Congamon Road and Feeding Hills. Is it is it advisable to try to put in another connector to the north? Um, again, we there's a there's a utility portion, which is water, gas, electrical, and sewer. Also, they they look at the recreational the recreational. Uh, they look at housing, housing for the elderly, for example. Um, they look they look at the full scope. So there's there's probably about 20 different parts to a master plan. <clears throat> and each one of those is a valuable, like I said, it's a, it's a tool for the town, one, to get grants, if, if, if grants are available. And two, it allows um, for a more organized layout and functionality of the town. Because we really wouldn't want to go ahead and put roads in or sewers in I think what Mr. Minister was referring to was a Sarah Drive. You know, they yeah. it's a low a low lying road, so they did put a cap they put a cap sewer in a water main. Sewers never came along. It is there now with the age of it. It's, it's probably the functionality is no longer good. But um, I think they were being optimistic that sewers would come available to that area. So it's, it's, it's really a good a guide, not only for all the different departments in town. And we'd have to, uh, outside um, engineering firm, typically is what handles it. They've done hundreds of these. They have the format down. They will gather information from the different offices, planning, conservation, recreation, housing for the elderly. You know, they will ask us for our input or what we have to give them the information to put together this basically a big cookbook so we can follow through the necessary steps and to make sure we're not stepping on each other. Yeah, Linda, usually what happens with those, um, those consultants act as facilitators along with the citizen master plan committee and they conduct what are called visioning sessions where they encourage the public to come into different public meetings and they go over some of these different components. And they'll, and they'll also do the outreach that Mike referred to with surveys. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Anyone else? That, uh, that, that subdivision, by the way, that I was talking about, the theory again, is, um, and I can't think the name of it, it's, uh, it's on North Pond. Um, uh, it's it about Amberley. the, uh, what is it? Is it Amber? Uh, no, not Amberleaf. Um, no, it was uh, it's going off the South Long Yard Road there on the right, North Pond to yes. or something. Yeah, yeah, whatever that's there. That's the one we were talking about. That and that was relatively close to, um, you know, uh, areas that have been uh, sewers. But yeah, we talked about that, but we didn't do it. We got talked out. We we. That was a group think session at the time, and uh, somebody walked in, say, "Well, what are the what are the uh, you know what are the elevations and everything else when you're all finished to get to put uh, pipes in for a sewer that isn't even you know isn't even on the on the books you know or on the uh, that's not there." So anyway, that's that's the one I was talking about, not Sarah Drive. That was before my time. Okay, thank I'm you. Old enough. All right, anyone else? 
Nope. All right, Mike, Alan, thank you for your time. We appreciate it. All right. Have thank a good you evening. For your time. Have a good evening. You too, guys. All right. Next up is there someone here from Town Hall Building and Grounds? I guess that's me. Oh, hey, Mr. Stein. How are you this evening? <laughs> uh, just a little beautiful day. I mean, obviously, we had we had talked about this at a previous meeting just briefly, but it's the uh, obviously we we have to uh, examining the need to uh, uh, replace the uh, town hall roof system there. So uh, we did provide all the committee members with a, uh, a letter from the designer who had just finished the uh, uh, fire station project as well as some um, information referred to by the earlier 2019 tie-in bond report. So um, all the background is there for you to understand, you know, what the building is, its history, um, you know, uh, what needs to be done. And um, obviously that's why we're here. We're here to talk about that first phase of getting that, um, uh, roof design done. We just had a leak in the assessor's office on Monday where we had stuff come through and the roofer is coming back and uh, we have a, a number of areas that uh, have to have the the decking underneath the shingles replaced. So, um, you know, the, the roofing companies just want to, you know, obviously we don't want to make them rich every time they show up, but it cost us five or $6,000 last fall. And I'm not sure what this one's going to do. And we now have a roof that's over 23 years old. It's good. And by the time you do design and bidding and all that, you're going to be around 25, 26 years. Okay. So this is pretty straightforward. And then um, one of the other considerations that's unique is when you look at the consolidated school, it was a flat roof building that um, got converted to a pitched roof. So that's when all a bunch of different utilities were added, like air conditioning, things that weren't there in 1928. So that's why you have that chiller unit. Uh, for some reason, the uh, um, engineers that put that there, they put it on the old roof and below the new roof. Well, when the work gets done under the roofing, that unit will be disassembled and craned out of there and will never have any major components like that below the roof line going forward into the future. And we would just place the replacement unit would be just down outside the building on a pad because we do have room there because as you recall, originally that's where the generator used to be, Mr. Deedy. Yes. And that was relocated to another part of the campus uh, so that we would not be having an issue where when the generator was running, uh, the fumes would be entering the HVAC system. And that's something that we obviously attributed to uh, the way the layout was done by the mechanical engineers back in the mid nineties when that project was done. And tonight you're looking for the 60 or 70 for the design or are you looking for the yes. 750? The no, 60. I'm just looking for the design right now. That's all we, you know, and, 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 and we're going to try to see if we can get it through CPC, but I have no guarantee of that. Linda, you, you know how that process works. Yeah. Oh, but that doesn't, that does not in any way diminish the need to start thinking about this issue. Right. Okay. So, and, and I have a responsibility when things like this happen to bring it before this board and the other boards and uh, articulate what it is, what it's about, and to make our case. And then others can make a decision. We, you know, we all understand this is only going to get worse. And, uh, you know, this will address the other things that go along with it, like the, the gutters and the downspouts and things like that. So, right, and this, this design is going to, is going to include moving that, uh, those units off the roof down to the, uh, the pad. That is, uh, Mr. Mish, that is why if you look at their letter, their design number was around the 60 to 70 and I increased this to 85. So that's why you'll see the number that you have in your package to vote on tonight because uh, I'm waiting for another number from the engineer because he says, yeah, we know firms that do this. And I said, well, I, I need an estimate on that. But so that's why the number you have is a little higher than the number in the designer's letter because he was just dealing with the roofing issue. I got it. 
And, 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 and of course, the other issue is you recall what we did before on the fire station. We went through the process, got the meet, the vote at town meeting, um, you know, hide a firm, did all the work, did the bids, did everything, and brought the bid numbers to town meeting last June. Um, and then along with that, you know, we also made sure we had contingency and things of that nature. So, so that's why this process would follow that. And, you know, let's take advantage of the next year to, to, to get this um, design done and be ready for the future. I mean, this was a historical building, you know, uh, it, it, just cause you modernize things, it just doesn't mean you just do a roof. We, we've used CPA money in the past to do um, uh, the front windows. When we kept the front original wood windows for a few years, we tried to keep them, but they didn't work out. They still had air leaks, even though they were in better shape. And then eventually windstorms blew them in. We had snowstorms coming in through the front lobby. So, and then we also renovated the auditorium with new drapes and lighting and sound systems. So, 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 the, you know, we've had to do other things to the building and, 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 and this is just one thing, you know, if eventually if we do the green energy uh, plan, we can replace the furnace under that. And Joe, if we do the um, uh, community development block grant in the future, we can do the elevator. And of course that's already listed as an item in the ADA report. All of you received an ADA report in a briefing last June on, this, um, on all our town issues with ADA stuff. So we're just taking a large project and we're breaking it down into pieces to get it ready. And that's what this committee is supposed to do, plan for the future. Okay, thank you, sir. Does anyone right. else have any questions in regards to the roof and the design? I, I have one question, Joe, it's Linda. Uh, what is the timeline in getting the roof design completed? How much time is the company gonna, the engineer is gonna need? Well, it's, my hope, Linda, would be that it could be done in six months so we could bring something to the May 2023, uh, 2022 town meeting, which essentially is fiscal year 23. Okay. So that is our goal. Our goal is to try to, and hopefully by holding a town meeting in May instead of June, that we can, we can jump on this process. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Nothing. All right, Mr. Steinhardt. Well, we appreciate your time tonight. Thanks for coming. Thank you. And they can put your other hat on. Okay. <laughs> All right. So it looks like, guys, we're just going to head right into the uh, to the votes. You guys, we can talk about each one if you want. If you want to spend a few minutes on it, we, we, we will, of course. And then we'll just go, for, we'll make a motion and go from I guess I'll just call the names out. I think that works the easiest. And yes, I'll remember your name, Terry. And, um, I, and excuse me, Mr. Chairman, I believe the way we've done it in the past is some of the recurring ones that you yeah. have, like, um, you know, cruisers in the, the three highway division ones for yeah. construction, pavement, and some of those. Um, I think you would, in the past, you, Linda, or Mr. Mish have looked at uh, blocking those into a block and then on them and then taking all the ones that are fairly new and then taking those individually because that's you are yeah. correct Linda does that sound familiar to you it does indeed I have a quick question yes sir I, I did not see a question for the 1.5 million for the radio system I know um, I, I put that on there too I, I noticed that that wasn't on there as well. okay but it, it is still up for yep. a vote okay yep. that's all I want yep. to know I'll, I'll just have to write that in. Okay. So remind us before we. I had to write them I all, will. anyways. No yeah. Problem. Well, you and of course, Mark, you know the dilemma with that one. You know, if if we do one regional approach, it's within that regional approach. If we do another right. regional approach, maybe Westfield, it's not in that one. Right. So I think I think you're right. As a committee member, we should also address that. Um, you know, as part of tonight's package. Okay. All right, so we're going to bundle up the cruisers, and it looks like um, paving and infrastructure. No, that's the that's the big girl. 
Yeah, pavement projects, construction improvements. I just don't see that. I see the on the second page. Those are on page yep. two. Oh, right on top, right? Fifty thousand pavement yeah. projects, and then uh, construction for forty-seven five. Yeah, and then the uh, usually the grinder pump is a recurring one. All right. Well, let's just find it here. That's on. That's on the last page. Okay. Are we saying all of these are getting lumped into one vote? What you're listing off right now? Yeah. Just those four, yeah. Every okay. year we seem to always those are recurring because they reoccur every year and they come in front of us because they're over the 25,000. So that's all of them. One, two, three, four, four of them, correct? All right. Uh, you're saying uh, what? This is OB5. Five. Okay. The police, the fifty thousand for DPW. Yep. The yep. Uh, forty-seven five for yep. the uh, Highwood uh, DPW, so and the thirty eighty for the uh, DPW. Yeah, I didn't cross them. There you go. And and that's it for the and for that. The last one's the grinder pumps for thirty. The sewer grinder pumps, uh, Terry. On the last yeah. page. Okay. Last page. Okay. Um, all right, I'd like to make the motion to uh, approve or. Okay. So Terry, we get all right, so Terry made a motion. Who would like to second it? Second. second. We'll go with Linda. She was louder. Okay. All right. So. <laughs> I think that was Chelsea, but we'll go. Oh, Who's no. that, Chelsea? He's, he's She's smiling. Muted. You can't even hear her. Yeah. Chelsea, you're going to have to unmute yourself. I'm unmuting that. So, Kyle, I didn't even say anything. It's on, I'm muting by choice. Okay, okay. Carl, you're first. Yes or no? Yes. Al Alinda, Alida? I'm gonna Alida, get yes. I got it right, yes. Linda? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I heard you, yes. Okay. Terry? Yes. Chelsea? Yes. Mr. Florida? You talking to me? Yeah, talking yeah. to me. Yes, Joe Didi, yes. Okay, that one's done. So next up, I have the fire department for 350,000 for the ambulance. I'll make a motion to uh, to uh, fund that. Okay. Oh, however second. it's worded. Mr. Kinnicky will second it. All right. Mr. Steinhardt. Yes. Alita. Yes, Alita, yes. Olivia, Olivia, Olivia. Okay, Linda. Yes. Mr. Kanicki. Yes. Chelsea. Yes. Wonderful. Terry. Yes. Joe Dee Dee, yes. Okay. And we're going to go to, this will be a great one. But Joe, this is where we would probably put police and fire communication system for 1.5 million. Okay. Let's do that. Make a motion to accept. Hey. All right. Cherry seconded that. Yep. So can I just clarify? <laughs> sorry, sorry to put a halt. Nope, let's, let's, let's but, but if there is two different branching of this, are we discussing that and making if we go with the centralized or are we just saying, let's just just do the whole communication systems, what are we talking about? Uh, well, one pathway with Westcom mm -hmm. um, ends up subsidizing this through that, okay. that entity. Another pathway with the city of Westfield as a more local regional approach west of the Connecticut River you know, because all the other towns are east of the Connecticut River. Mm -hmm. So uh, that one um, may very well not include this. So we, we have to be okay. either way. Okay. All right. Just making sure. I, I think you're looking at a two to three year project anyway. So you're going to be doing tower evaluations okay. and evaluations of the radio systems and that anyways before you get there. So, right. I think this is more important to show our support 
because there's so many moving parts within the next probably two weeks. It's it's yes. it's crazy what they're going through. Yeah. Right. So it could it could very well change the dollar amount or the yes. involvement. Yep. Just we're supporting that. Okay, got it. Yeah. Or not even happen at all. Mm -hmm. Yep, got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but ultimately, we do need to have a new radio system. Absolutely. Exactly. But we you're right. In that direction. You know, we, we could end up we could end up having a number that ends up being a little higher over the course of time. Yeah. You know? But at least I and I did send you up, right? I sent you the models of what the potential uh, amortization schedules would be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and it's clearly as long as the selectmen take the vote for the appropriate term and they do it consistent with the Department of Revenue Asset Life Guidelines, we're fine legally. Okay. Good times. Okay, so the motion was made and seconded. Mr. Steinhardt. Yes. Alita. Yes. I said that right. Linda. Yes. Mr. Kanicki. Yes. Chelsea. Yes. Terry. Yes. Joe Didi, yes. Okay, that passed. Next up is the paving and infrastructure improvements for $3 million for highway. Now, Carl, can you just refresh our memory? I know last year I fought and got that million. Do we approve a certain amount and then the other two boards chop that up? Yeah, they can amend it. They can amend it downward. Yeah. I think the, the year before it was $2 million. I think last year they, he asked for three in... in yeah you awarded at the budget 1 million. 1 million. Okay. And by the way, that, you know, that, that um, is part of the uh, upcoming bond issue along with the, the fire station roof. So yep. we're selling bonds at the, uh, at the end of this month going into April and hopefully we'll get some good rates. I mean, we just did a short-term borrowing the other day for one year to pay down the loose equipment. And, and uh, that came in today at four tenths of 1%. Oh, we sold nice. that. Nice. So, oh, so what we're saying is that because uh, I was looking to reduce that to two million, um, my own my own thought, and I mean obviously I'll have a vote on the on the uh, finance committee, but um, is this something that we would want to do now, or we just go ahead and do a three million or one million or fifty cents or whatever whatever we think we, we should try to do? My personal opinion is I like leaving it at three. So that gives me a lot of fighting on that, that day when we fight over this, because it's a great, nice. it's a great topic. And I, and I love to, you know, shoot from the fences. So I'd rather, if we go in at two, I've already lost. I know we're probably at a million anyways, but I enjoy getting beat up all the way down to that number. It also seems like if you're going to reduce it, you should have reasons specifically what you're reducing off of it. And it seems like that's kind of beyond our scope. Right. right. Yeah. I, I did generally what happens to Chelsea is the, um, you know, whatever amount it goes through the budget process that the selectmen bring to town meeting, then mm -hmm. selectmen as the actual road commissioners meet with the DPW and they go through that whole list that Randy gave us a few weeks ago. And then they figure out which ones they're going to do, you know, like we actually go out and do site visits. We actually drive around town and we look at roads and as road commissioners and they, they figure out which one they're going to do and, and they do it with the director and his staff. All, everybody standing in the middle of a road talking about it. The unfortunate part is a million or two million only have to look at two roads. Yeah, you know, We're not looking at 17 roads and all excited. I mean, what was Tannery Road in theory last year? 1.2 million? So right. So over. So, so by the time we were done discussing that, there was no other roads to go to look at. So we just all got back our cars and went back to the office. Right. Yeah. And luckily it's coming in a it, lot less, but. Yeah. And know. then usually half of it gets on Facebook because people want to know why there's nine cars sitting in their road with people standing on it. Yeah. <laughs> Very true. It makes for a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, I make a motion to leave it at $3 million. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Linda seconded it. All right, yep. Mr. Steinhardt. Yes. Alita. Yes. Linda. Yes. Mr. Kanicki. Yes. Chelsea. Yes. Terry. Yes. Joe DD. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Next up is the highway road machinery request, the tractor and mower attachments, 
for 171,000. Um, last year we had 80,000 saved for it between the wood chipper and the, the fun summer we had here. We, that money's gone. So we're right back to the one, I think there's a few grand left, but not much. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. We, we, we thought, we thought we were going to have the money to be able to, to help offset this when we, when we can go and get the balance, but uh, yeah. Mother nature decided with a series of storms that it was going to wreck the one we had that had to be rebuilt. And then the board said, well, we're never going to let this happen to us again, where we had to be a, uh, we had to be captive by hired vendors. So that's why we got that other unit. Yeah. Any other questions about it guys? No. Nope. All right. I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion, accept the mower and tractor. Mr. Kanicki, is there a second? Second, Gary. Very seconded. All right, Carl Steinhardt. Yes. Alita. Yes. Linda. Yes. Mr. Kanicki. Yes. Chelsea. Yes. Terry. Yes. Joe Dede, yes. Thank you. All right. Next up is the hot box for DPW for 41000 Right. And Joe, you did get all those uh, ranked ordering things that Randy gave all of us, right? Yes. I, we did send it to the committee members, Randy's prior. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it really mattered. I just was wondering, and I wasn't, I was probably should have saved this for the budget hearing, but um, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, you asked for it, so I got it. And I shared it with all of you. No, well, I appreciate it. You know, the more paper for you, the better. Yeah, wonderful. All right. Anybody would like to make a motion for the hot box? I'll make a motion make for the hot box. All right. I'll second. Terry second, second Terry. that. All right. Mr. Steinhardt. Yes. Alita. Yes. Linda. Yes. Mr. Kanicki. Yes. Chelsea. Yes. Terry. Yes. Joe DD, yes. Okay. All right. So next is the DPW paving box, which is different than the hot box for 28,000. The hot box was um, to move the pavement around and the paving box is to layer it into place versus throwing it with a shovel. So I need a motion for this one. So moved. Linda, okay, is there a second? Second. All right. Mr. Steinhardt. Yes. Well, hang on. That's, oh. that's 11th on their, on, their, uh, on their list. Right. But I, I don't know if our job is to worry about the list as much as worry about if it's merited. And then the finance committee and, the, and everyone else takes it up later. Okay. Finance committee will take it off if they need to. Yeah. And, and I was thinking ahead of time, thinking, oh, no, we should do it. But then I'm like, why? You know, everything on this list, of course, is merited, depending on who you talk to. I mean, they all, and I get it, you know, it's the wish list or it's what they really need, you know. So I don't know if it's our place to, to, to kill it now or wait and let more people have a discussion about passing it or killing it. You know, Plus if you kill if you kill their highway budget of, of their paving of three million, they might need this. <laughs> oh yes, yeah. and you're not kidding. Yes. You're not kidding. <laughs> Are there potholes in front of your house? No, not really. No, no. Awesome. I'm pretty good. Yeah, so be careful because there could be by tomorrow morning, depending on how this goes. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> hey, there's people listening. All right, so. There was a motion made, and it was seconded. So, Mr. Steinhardt? Yes. Alida? Yes. Linda? Yes. Mr. Kanicki? Yes. Chelsea? Yes. Terry? No. That's fine. Joe Didi? Yes. Okay. Next up is the dump truck for 260000 any discussion? Okay, I need a motion. As you can see, he did rank that two overall in the division, then three overall yeah. in the other thing. Yeah. All right, is there a motion? Um, Terry will make the motion. All righty, is there a second? 
Second. Okay. Mr. Steinhardt. Yes. Al Al Alita. Yes. Linda. Yes. Mr. Kanicki. Yes. Chelsea. Yes. Terry. Yes. Joe DD. Yes. Okay. Another big one. So water division, the transmission main line improvements. And this is down by uh, Mr. Chairman, there was one more ahead of it, the wheel loader. Oh, I'm so sorry, the wheel loader, 180,000. Okay, right. any discussion Which, about that? Yeah. No, all right, I need a motion. Ooh, so I'll make, so Linda will make it, I'll second it. Mr. Steinhardt. Yes. Alita. Yes. Linda. Yes. Mr. Kanicki. Yes, as long as he gets rid of the old one. <sighs> Chelsea. Yes. <laughs> Terry. No. Joe Didi, yes. Um, it, it, Mr. Kanicki, you are correct. We do run into problems sometimes where the DPW thinks they're gems after we buy them a new one. But Mr. Steinart has a thing in place where he pulls their plates. Okay, very they good. Get rid of well, them. that, I mean, obviously that has to be when the decision's finally made by the board on what goes to town meeting. Correct. It's true because what happens is sometimes you someone says, well, let's replace something. And then what happens is you're not replacing the thing you replaced. You're replacing the thing they didn't get rid of. Right. But then you're replacing it twice. Yes. And then you get into where you're putting it and more insurance. You start having more vehicles in your fleet. So Robin does the fleet sheet for me. And believe me, there's nothing that gets my... Well, we don't need any more of a bigger... <laughs> That's well, well, if it's so bad that you have to replace it, why are you keeping it? Right. And I believe in this case, the one at the, the there's a, the second one involved is, is rotting pretty bad. So the good one now, while it's still good, will become the second one and that other one would go away. So, right. you know, it's the shuffle. Like the right. cruisers, kind of. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Mark, you remember, in fact, Mark, we're, we're finally getting around to getting rid of the car that you used to drive. <laughs> and I'd be gone eight years. Uh, yeah, so we're, that was in the car. blue car. So the uh, the canine car is coming to, to take its place. Yep. All right. So the transmission main for five hundred seventy five thousand. Yeah, water. that is that. Of course, was supposed to be done in the scope of services in the design for the project previously, and this is water retained earnings, water revenue, water enterprise fund. Correct. So that was supposed to be done. So they're still about 8,000 linear feet short of going up College Highway North into where that trailer park is where the water transmission line from Springfield come. Yep. So this is going to be important going back to issues relating to if, if we have a moratorium because we can only bring so much water through this that sized old line that's in place there, as well as our well, and this is an important thing because this is a larger straw in the ground that allows us to put more water into our water distribution system. It just happens to be water that Springfield sends from Caldwell Mountain Reservoir to Springfield that we siphon off in a pipe along the way. Correct. And this affects our water users again, not so much the whole town, correct? Oh, right, right. 2,400 water users. All the rest of us are on uh, wells. Correct. Okay. Make a motion, accept. All right. I'll second that. Okay. Carl? Yes. Alida? Yes. Linda? Yes. Mr. Kanicki? Yes. Chelsea? Yes. And Terry Mesh? DD, yes. Okay. The grinder pumps we are all set with. Yep. The one ton pickup truck sewer division, $80,000. Um, that comes out of sewer retained earnings, of course. And I have to laugh because the uh, 
one of our local mechanics sent me pictures yesterday as that truck broke down. You know, it was cute. But, uh, really? Where did it break down, Joe? Uh, I'm not quite sure where, but I, I actually went over to the repair shop to look at it, and they got it running, but one cylinder is skipping. But the rot on the truck was unbelievable, just the way they're rotting away now. It's, it's crazy. And I know they're, it's in the elements all the time. But it's, uh, I told them they're going to have to milk it for a while, and I didn't want to hear about it. So we need a motion to accept. Motion to accept. All right, and there was a second. Okay. Mr. Steinhardt. Yes. Alita. Yes. Linda. Yes. Mr. Kanicki. Yes. Chelsea. Yes. Terry Mish. Yes. Joe Didi. Yes. Oh, buildings and grounds. We just had a presentation this evening in regards to that. They're looking for 85,000 for the, the start of their engineering and whatnot. So I'll need a motion for that. Make, Make a motion. motion. I'll second Terry. There you go. Wonderful. Mr. Steinberg. Yes. Alita. Yes. It's got to be a better way. Linda. Yes. Mr. Kanicki. Yes. Chelsea. Yes. Terry Mish. Yes. Joe Didi. Yes. Thank you. The planning board $100,000 master plan which I do believe will come in much less because of all those other components. Yeah, no, I, I think this is the, this really lends itself to uh, the use of some CPC funds. Yeah. I, housing CPC fund has like 500,000 in it. So, and because really only the housing authority has ever been coming in with applications for it. That's only recently, yeah. In the last, maybe twice in the last five or six years. So. Yeah. So that, along with the open space account, I, I think they can make a pretty good size dent in that issue. And of course, you know, we'll, we'll know because there'll be warrant articles being developed and this will go yeah. um, top yeah. with everything else. Understood. So uh, I'll make that motion. All right. I'll second that motion. Mr. Steinhardt. Yes. Al Alita. Yes. Linda. Yes. Mr. Kanicki. Yes. Chelsea. Yes. And Terry Mish. No. Already? Start before the kid. Understood. Joe Didi, yes. Okay. All right. That's everything. Thank you. This will now get moved forward. Um, and hopefully uh, we'll see you guys all at the finance committee meeting. Even if you're not involved, you can always zoom in. It's a great time, you know, and actually I think this way we'll have a lot more discussion. I hope the public shows up because normally in the actual meeting at town hall, nobody, and I mean, nobody shows up other than whoever's supposed to speak to us. It's rather disappointing. Well, we're fortunate. I mean, I think we have a good turnout at town meeting. We usually have a hundred. Oh, yeah. But, but and then they, yeah. and what do they bring up at town meeting? Who the hell approved that? What's this all about? I'm like, well, we only had two budget hearings that no one went to. That's when you should have asked the questions, not on the town meeting floor, but it's all good. That's well, I good. think that, you know, by the time we all see each other in person, we'll be standing in a parking lot at the high school again. <laughs> Understood. But the Zoom is a wonderful way to actually, you know, there's no excuses now, right? We're going to put TVs in at, at town hall eventually so we can do channel 15. Well, here's channel 15 yeah. and it's, you know, yeah, we're just finishing the second phase of the Wi-Fi, and then we will yeah. we'll we'll be looking at doing that probably during the summer, Joe, where we can start doing some different conference rooms. Right. So with uh, Peter. Yes, Peter. Friend at the radio station. Yes, my 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 guy. All right. Any questions? Any questions? Where would I no. where would I find the um, information for the finance committee meeting? I'm on their their section of the website, but I don't see upcoming. We'll have it. E we'll email Robin can tomorrow. send you that. Yeah, I will send it to you, Alita. But any time that you need to find that, if you go to the home page for the town, or mm -hmm. to the calendar, you just double click on the date, and the agenda will come up. So if you go to March sixth on the okay. calendar. Are you on the home page? 
Hang on, it was on the, um, I was on the finance. Okay, so yep, I'm- So go to the homepage. Yeah, public public meetings or- Where it yep. says calendar uh, on the left. Mm -hmm. And then just double click on March 6th. Got it. And the agenda should come up. Yeah, but on any board, you can always cross-reference it by right. looking at boards. Any, any meeting, you know, planning yeah. board will be up there, finance committee. The select board meetings are up there. This committee yeah. meetings. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. All right. Motion to adjourn. So moved. moved. Second. Awesome. All those in favor? Carl Stein at I. Aye. 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 Roll call vote. Okay. Linda, yes or no? Yes. Tanicki, yes or no? Yes. Yes. Kelsey, yes or no? Yes. Terry, I know you want to stay on, but it's yes or no. Yes. All right, Joe DD, yes. Folks, have a great night. Good night. There you go, Carl. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Well, thank you. Bye. All right, good day.